Good morning and welcome to a new edition of Shelter Daily in His Word. What a joy it is to be with you today, this fine Monday. Isn't it beautiful outside? God is so good to us. We had a great day this weekend. Uh, Sunday was just a wonderful day in the Lord. God moved upon our hearts and spoke to us and talked to us about how that we are the light in the midst of chaos. And I am believing that God is going to raise up people just like you to ensure that the chaos does not overtake the world that we live in, but rather that the light of Jesus Christ through your life and mine will shine and we'll be able to see God do great things in the hearts and the lives of his people. So with that in mind, let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. We do want to remember some, spe- some people in prayer. Please remember, if you will, uh, Sister Shante Lewis, our uh, uh, Bishop Lewis's uh, mother-in-law, who's been in the hospital. God would just touch her. And uh, remember those uh, who are in our nursing homes. I think about uh, Sister Denise Ebert's mother, Brenda, uh, that is in the nursing home, and some others that are that are uh, at home bound and they're not able to be able to get out and things. And then I think about uh, our pastors and our leaders and the ones who are a part of our church, uh, Pastor Hector uh, Flores, and, and I, I think about uh, Bishop James, and, and then the leadership of our church. There's never, there's never a moment where we don't have something that we need to bring to the Father. But you know what? Uh, Jesus uh, in his word says you have not because you ask not so uh, we're asking we're going to believe and just going to just ask God to touch today so let's pray together Father thank you for the opportunity we have this morning to be able to come and just share in the word today knowing that you are well able to hear and to answer the, the needs of our hearts and while God you are on the throne the Bible tells us that we have an intercessor who intercedes in our behalf and so we come just asking, believing, and holding fast to the promises that you made in your word. I pray, God, that you will move upon uh, Sister Shante's mother. I pray, Lord, that you will just touch Brenda. I pray, God, that you'll touch our pastor staff. I pray for our leader staff today, God, just asking you that you'll just speak over them and just do a work in their hearts and lives as we together become lights in the midst of the chaos. God, that we will shine bright and see your glory in your presence and see hearts and lives change, sons and daughters to come home, mothers and fathers to be reunited together with daughters and sons. I pray today, God, that you will just move upon hearts and we'll give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, last week we were talking about the second coming of Jesus. And so today what I'd like to do is I'd like to begin uh, just a discussion on the rapture of the church. And so today we're going to look at that. So if you have your Bibles, go to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and read with me verses 15 through 18. And then we're going to look at a couple of other scriptures as well. So if you want to just mark that one and then go to 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 52 and then 2 Peter 3, 1 through 9. Those are the texts we're going to be uh, just kind of keying in on as we discuss the rapture of the church today. So let's look at 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verses 15 through 18. It says this, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Well, there's a lot to unpack just in those few verses right there, and we'll, we'll unpack those in a moment. But let's now flip over to 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 and 52. It says this, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, in the last trump- at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. 
Amen. Boy, there's some power in that one as well. Watch this now in Second in Second Peter chapter three verses one through nine. Behold, I now write to you this second epistle, in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before the holy prophets and the com and of the commandment of us the apostles of the lord and savior knowing this first scoffers will come in the last day walking according to their own lust and saying where is the promise of his coming for since the fathers fell asleep all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation for this they willfully forget, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and in water, by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men but beloved do not forget this one thing that with the Lord one day is a thousand years and a thousand years a day the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some count slackness but as long suffering toward us not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance and again these three specific verses uh, 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 locations in the Bible speak about events that are going to be transpiring that we the church believe in what we call the rapture while on a uh, South Pole expedition British explorer Sir Ernest Shackleton left a few men on Elephant Island promising that he would return and later when he tried to come back huge icebergs blocked the way but suddenly as if by a miracle an avenue opened in the ice and Shackleton was able to go through his men ready and waiting quickly scrambled aboard no sooner had the ship cleared the island that the ice crushed together behind them. Contemplating their narrow escape, the explorer said to one of his men, It was fortunate that you were packed and ready to go. And their reply, We never gave up hope. Whenever the sea was clear of ice, we rolled up our sleeping bags and reminded each other the boss may come today wow that right there is a perfect illustration of what Jesus said behold I come quickly he told us in his word over and over again that he's coming he talked about you and I being ready for his return so let's talk about that just for a few moments what when we talk about the rapture what is it? Because the, the rapture, the word, uh, it, you will not find it in the Bible. You won't find that specific word in the Bible. The word rapture actually is derived from a Latin word called raptu. Uh, this word means to be caught away or to be caught up. And the word described in our text that we read just a moment ago, where the Bible says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first and we who are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord now this this catching away or catching up or caught up is different from what we were talking about uh, last week when we talked about Jesus coming to the earth there's a, there's a difference. The, the Apostle Paul addresses the church at Thessalonica concerning this idea of what this Latin word means, raptu, to be caught up. The word describing being caught away for the church 
to be caught up in the air with the Lord. Uh, it, it only involves, this rapture only involves the faithful followers of Jesus Christ. This is the rapture of the church. This is the time of the catching away, if you will, of the saints. So what does, uh, what does the rapture look like? What, if we were to look into the Bible, what, what would we see as we, as we look through Scripture? Well, uh, our text tells us a couple of identifiers that we can look for. Number one, the text says that the dead in Christ will rise first. So here is, uh, this is the, the, the uh, first event of the coming of the Lord. It says, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Alright, so there is going to be a shout. Will everybody hear that shout? Will everybody know it's the shout? I believe the shout will be like a thundering or, or it will be some loud noise. For many, they'll hear this loud noise, but not knowing what it is. But then those who are believers who Jesus said, my sheep know my voice and another they'll not listen to. I believe that that, vo that voice when he comes, he will come with a shout. That shout is a shout of celebration, a shout uh, of the, the bridegroom coming for his bride. The Bible says that the, the first thing when Christ uh, is, is, appears in the sky, he will call forth the dead saints, those who have died. Now I have been serving as the pastor of Jubilee Worship Center now for over 30 years and in the over the 30 years that I have served I have buried many wonderful saints of God and there are cemeteries around this region uh, where I have where I have buried beloved saints who died knowing Jesus Christ and they themselves were looking for the appearing of the Lord. And now here's the thing. He says the, the dead will rise first. And all the ones, so all the ones that died in Christ will rise first to meet the Lord in the air. And then those who are alive and remain will be caught up together to be with the Lord. Now, I don't know, you know, we don't know the hour. We've talked about this. We don't know the hour. We don't know the time. We don't know the day when Jesus will return. We just know he will return. We know that he's coming again. We know this. And, and so we anxiously, like we read about uh, the people on Elephant Island, we, we are making ourselves ready daily for the return of the Lord. This return of the Lord will be visible. We will be visibly united with Christ and united with those who have died before us. Uh, my mother, my father, uh, my uncles, uh, my grandparents, those I know who serve the Lord. I have aunts and, and uncles who served God and, 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 and they, are, they are now uh, with the Lord, but their bodies lay in a state of sleep within the grave. The, uh, Paul talks about the sleep of the saints. And the time will come when the, the, the flesh will rise up out. Can you imagine driving down? Central Avenue and going to the uh, corridor uh, where they're at uh, Willowdale and Central Avenue and they're at the uh, cemetery at, at, at cemetery there that all of a sudden uh, over there I, because I know uh, people I have a, 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 a grandmother-in-law that is buried there I have a grandfather-in-law uh, who's buried there and one day one day their graves are going to open and when they do, they will come forth. You say, well, uh, how is this possible? Well, if you remember, there is uh, in, the, in the Gospels, if you read the Gospels, you will read how that when, when Jesus died on the cross, that during that moment, there was a moment when all of a sudden dead saints came alive. Isn't that amazing? 
Uh, can you imagine having a knock at the door and it's one of your, one of your uh, long lost relatives and they come knocking at your door and saying, hello, how are you? Here they are uh, uh, alive. They're, they're, they're alive. And this is uh, because the Bible tells us that Jesus has the power over life and death. And the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that's going to raise you and I from the dead. So if I, if I go by way of death, then I get to go with the first. I get to go with the first redeemed. If I go by way of rapture and death does not take me, then I will go in the rapture following those who have died in the Lord. This will be visible. We will look. This is why the Bible says, look up, lift up your head, for your redemption draweth nigh. This will be visible. Following this rapture. Now this is where, uh, you know, we talked about last week. Well, following the rapture, we believe that the tribulation period will begin to unfold. And, and we will begin to see the Christians. Uh, and so the question always has been asked, well, will Christians go through the tribulation period? Will Christians go through this period of, uh, of the, what, what Daniel talked about, the seven-week period where uh, there will be a great tribulation on the earth where God will bring judgment to the earth? Uh, I'm of the opinion that the, the tribulation period is about God calling the Jewish people back into its covenant relationship that he had established with them during the time of Abraham. Covenants, according to scripture, cannot be broken. God has not broken covenant with Israel. And yet, because they have been estranged from God, God now will use this period of time to call them back <clears throat> into a right relationship with him. Tribulation, I believe, is not for the church. Tribulation is for those who remain following the rapture. So here's the point. The point is you need to be ready for the rapture. I don't know when it will be. I just know it's going to happen. Now, I know that there are differing views about the rapture. I, I get it. I understand that. And I know that. And, I, and I'll just briefly touch on this for a moment. There are those who believe in what we call the post-tribulation view, which they believe that the church is going to go through the entirety of the tribulation. And then at the end of the tribulation, as we talked about last week, at the coming of Jesus, when he comes to establish his millennial kingdom, then they will reign with him during that time. Now, <clears throat> the conflict I come in, I, 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 I have with that is, is what we just read a moment ago in, in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, where he said, the Lord himself shall come and, descend, and the saints will be caught up. All right? Because when we read the description of the coming of the Lord, it, he comes with ten thousands of his saints, thousands upon thousands of his saints. He comes with them. So would it be a, a going up and a coming right back? Is that what would happen? Uh, if you're post, uh, in, in the idea of post-tribulation, then you've got to, you've got to somehow uh, recognize there are these elements there that don't quite fit. Then there are those who believe in what we call mid tribulation view. The mid-tribulation view states that the church will only go through about half of the tribulation period. So the, the tribulation is broken up into two parts. The first three and a half years and then the last three and a half years, which makes seven years. And some have the, the view that, uh, that the first half will not be as bad as the last half, but they fail to recognize that the entire seven-year period is judgment from God. That God will bring judgment on the earth. So even in the first part of the tribulation, there is judgment the like of which the world has not seen before and will not see uh, ever again. This begins, it only escalates 
as the time frame moves forward. So there are those who say, well, the church is going to have to go through part of the tribulation. And they have, they have uh, their uh, discussion as far as why they believe that, why that there is uh, that aspect of it. Then there are those who believe in a pre-tribulation view. This is, we believe in a uh, pre-tribulation. Prior to the tribulation, prior to the tribulation, the church will not... Uh, will will be raptured out and will not go through any of the tribulation at all. Now that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that we won't experience difficulty until the time comes, because we know the Bible talks about how the times and things will be prior to the coming of the Lord. So this is the point. We as the church, we take this view. We say we believe in the premillennial second coming of Jesus Christ. All right. So what we're saying is we believe in a second coming. We believe that Jesus is coming again and it's premillennial. In other words, prior to the millennial reign, Jesus will return. Well, what will happen prior to that? Well, if you move through scripture, we many, many take. Now, not, not, I, I can't say everyone takes the, the view that I take. I know that there are people out there and I'm not here to try to convince you to change your viewpoint or anything. I'm just saying to you, this is where I stand and I am going to stay where I stand on this. So I believe that Jesus will come prior to, and I believe the Bible teaches that the church will not go through the seven year tribulation period. Now there are, there's another view uh, that's out there, what's called the partial rapture view. All right. Now the partial rapture view states that only those sanctified will be taken before the tribulation and then the rest of the church will go through the tribulation. Now, uh, this, is, uh, this is a very, uh, uh, one of those areas where, okay, who is considered sanctified and who is not? What, what uh, deems one sanctified and what is not? Who is holy and who is not? Uh, you know, this is, the, this is the whole thing that we deal with. So while we go through this this week, I want you to keep in mind that while there are varying views, our view is simple. We believe in the premillennial second coming. We believe in the rapture of the church. So we're going we're gonna to dive into this a little deeper as we move forward this week. And I, I want you to pay attention. I want you to get your Bibles out. I also, uh, if you have questions that you would like to ask me during this time I want you to feel free to put in the comment box we'll be watching looking if you like what you're hearing slap the like button share what we're teaching tell other people hey listen you might want to tune in to what's being talked about here because this is really important and it's a very very interesting topic to be able to discuss and I know uh, some people don't get excited about stuff like this but I get very excited when I talk about the rapture of the church because I'm looking for his appearing I pray that you are too he's coming for those who are watching waiting and praying those who are occupying doing we're holding fast we're taking our ground we're taking back what the enemy has stolen away from us and we're going to bring it back and we're going to bring others into the kingdom of God amen and that's where we're going to be so I want you to join with me throughout this week as we join together in these episodes of shelter daily in his word thank you for tuning in today may the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace as you walk with him have a great day in the Lord. So come and be different. I just want to be different. So could you be different?